Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Triangulation is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Triangulation, episode 72, recorded October 3rd, 2012. John Hodgman. Triangulation is brought to you by Audible.com. For the free audiobook of your choice, visit audiblepodcast.com slash triangulation. It's time for Triangulation, the show where we get such interesting people and spend an hour with them. And it's actually one of my favorite things to do on Twitter, and, and, and this one especially, because uh, somebody I just adore is here. He is a, a comedian. He is a, a failed uh, a literary agent. I don't know. If now, wait a right. minute. Failed. <laughs> a highly Fa- successful. Former, liter- former, former professional <laughs> literary agent. <laughs> I, I, sold, I sold a book at least. Did you? One, sure. sure I did. John Hodgman is with us. And it's on the uh, celebratory occasion of the audio and paperback version of his most recent book. That Neither of which is that. This is the hardcover edition. Yeah, I no, can, I have the, the, I the expensive, because, high quality. Right, because... Ow! It's, so, that's, <laughs> it's hard. That's the tough one. <laughs> that yeah. is all, which is the third in the uh, trilogy of uh, every, every, all world Complete knowledge. world knowledge. Everything you'd ever want to know. Right. And this one focuses particularly on the end of the world, which is coming in December, yeah. Ragnarok. That's why you need both editions, because this one, this one, after the collapse of civilization, is useful as a... This is a perfect. Weapon. That could be say <laughs> ow. Whereas the soft cover is more useful as fuel. Fuel. Yeah, burns more easily. And what would you use the audio book for? Consolation. Yeah, yeah, and you'll need that. What a pleasure to be here. Such a thrill to have you. Thank Gosh, you for coming. Thank you. Yeah, were the lights bothering your eyes? Is that... <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> this is really this is a nice setup you have here in Petaluma. Thank you very much. I tried to I tried to dress for Petaluma. Yeah, you look Western. You got a Western yeah. shirt, uh, little flowers. I'm going to raise some chickens after Pearl this. Pearl buttons. Are you um, are you uh, in town for? Uh, I'm in town for this. For this? Don't you understand? There's nothing else going on in Petaluma. I flew across. I flew across the country to be here well, with thank you. Thank you. It's so it's so because, great. Because you know you talked to my friend Jonathan Colton. I did last week, and we've spoken all the time. You and I. I'm such a fan. You're a regular on our holiday special. That's true. Yeah. yeah. So th- two or three years running, we consumed huge amounts of uh, Jägermeister. And, and but I couldn't be here for it because I no. live. Uh, I live in my Brooklyn, my survival brownstone in Park Slope and Chateau Marmont. And uh, and so I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't drink with you. Yeah. And Colton, you know, Colton and I, we would we would watch the. Am I, allowed, am I allowed to say the the network that you the, the tech, tech TV? TV? Am the I tech allowed to TV? Say that? Yeah, yeah, of course. Or is just the is is the spite too great? <laughs> the spite is great. Yeah, <laughs> in this one, I but... agree. Spite is great. <laughs> but long before any of this, and of course, it's long before any of this, uh, Jonathan Colton and I would watch uh, watch you on that show. You were that young, you couldn't grow facial hair. Yeah, I can barely. <laughs> <laughs> the only the only reason this is happening is because I can't grow a beard. Like this is literally every whisker. That I have is deployed you now. You should be grateful. You have a boyish uh, visage. It's good. That's tr- I look. I look like a weird mustached baby. <laughs> exactly. It's not a strange not amount of hair. But Colton and I would we watch it. We watch you on that all the time. And Colton was all, Colton is always the guy who would tell me what's what with regard to the computers. Yeah, he was Colton your is to me expert. as you are to the rest of the to mm, the whole world. Mm-hmm. Do you yeah, see well, what I mean? Jonathan, you know, he's a programmer. He's very technical. And I always and I would watch. You would talk some gobbledygook about computers and so forth. But I appreciate you because you are a broadcasting professional. You have probably the greatest radio voice that I've ever heard. In Thank my life. you very much. Why am I not on your audiobook? Uh, well, because you've got um, Dick Cavett. Yeah, my he hero lives in New York. Ah, Rachel Maddow lives in New York. Lives in New York. John Hamm comes to New York from time to of time. Of Mad Men fame. Of what did Mad John Men. Hamm do on the audiobook? Uh, there is a it, it, in, so the audio book of that is all has come out now th- that is all is my third and final book of complete world knowledge after the areas of my expertise and more information than you require those were the first two yes and this one covers everything that I didn't cover in those the two subjects that uh, that I previously refused to cover wine because it's disgusting and sports because everyone else is covering it right and I don't know anything about it until now 
uh, wealth, <laughs> which I know a, a little bit about, and, uh, and the end of the world, which we should all be concerned about, because the Mayans, as you know, are threatening our livelihood by predicting that the world is going to end on December 21st of this year. Yes. Uh, leaving the earth consumed by fire and flood and, and, and famine, leaving only John Cusack alive, like we've seen in the movies. Yes. Yeah. How, how fortunately, if this book would help you as a guide to surviving those days? Well, I think, I think it might ease the pain as, as existence yeah. comes to an end. Oh, so it's really not, there's nothing more after this and John Cusack? Well, we don't, know, we don't know what's going to happen on December 21st. It could be that, as I predict, the world, uh, the world suffers a huge electromagnetic omega pulse, um, massive solar storms reverse the Earth's polarity. The century toad cracks the Earth in half, and we're all consumed by the blood wave. Or it could be uh, uh, an awakening of, of consciousness, or nothing at all. <laughs> but either way, uh, this book will prepare you for I, I some got, of that. I got to point out the blood wave was uh, is supposed to begin uh, in just uh, three days. Yeah. Well. <laughs> So the clock is ticking down. You you had better you had better find a house that is at least <laughs> five thousand feet above sea level, or uh, get a um, a house boat. W- when does the sentry toad strike? Is that later? That's later. The sentry toad is almost now, at the very end. Ha- I don't want to be I, I don't want to be a killjoy, but I, I mean I do have to point out as we go back in time. Some well, in for instance, September twenty seventh, which has already passed, the sky yeah. over Montana finally collapses, crushing all below it. That 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 didn't happen. Well, they're covering it up. Oh, it did happen. Yeah, it fell down, and now the government has covered up the sky with a tarp. See, I brought you something. <laughs> by the way, on this, oh, real mayonnaise. This is mayonnaise. You know, I've been using that fake stuff for so long. Well, that's actually from your refrigerator here, because <laughs> I realized it, I came it's empty-handed. Chilly. It's chilly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's usually mayonnaise is usually better that way. When you are when you're stocking your survival bunker, is there are a couple good? things that you want to have, yeah. and you want to start stockpiling mayonnaise now because it's very, it's a it's a it's terrific hard to make. it's 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 a terrific well it's a terrific hair conditioner. Mm-hmm. It's a natural topical analgesic. If you get a sunburn, you can put mayonnaise on on Fantastic. your. If you got a sunburned face, you put mayonnaise. Yeah. On your face, yeah. and then it doubles as a quick short term albino mask. <laughs> and also, uh, you, you spread it out on some garbage bags uh-huh. and, and put it out on the lawn, and you uh-huh. get a, a slip and slide. <laughs> so, this is really many oh, uses. Yeah. You leave it out in the sun for a while, it becomes a handy poison. A thousand and one uses. Yeah. To the this. only other thing that's more useful than mayonnaise is urine. Okay. To stockpile. And I left some of that for you here as well. <laughs> I noticed. Yeah. The bathroom door was locked for a very long time. So, so wine, <laughs> wealth, sports, the end of the world. Get us back on track. That is all. It's all in here. And the audiobook has has come out for download only via um, Audible. Are you familiar? Yes, I am so, oh, familiar so very familiar. In fact, we have some... Buzz uh, marketing. We have some... Buzz, what? Buzz. We have some clips on our website at twit.tv that we got before, pre, pre-release. They're not good now because it came out yesterday. Yeah, but, you know, they're, they're still free. <laughs> they're still free. Do you want to just play? Do you have anything uh, to hand there, John? Uh, I, I could play it, probably. I have, I have a... Uh, I'm acting it out for you. I, you know, we don't really need the clips because you are here in person, but I just... Hey, how about one last song uh, for the road? Sounds for old like time's you. sake? I guess the road for me and... Um, I don't have anything in my Why'd ear. Why'd you turn it down? Brave. How about one more song? Um, so something oh, nautical then? And yeah, that'd be song. great. Yeah. Maybe some, uh, something peppy, it's like, Jonathan a, like Colton. a sea shanty Colton. or like a... Mm, no, how about something sad and haunting? Yeah. Something for the oh, end of the world. Play, don't, sure. play, don't, okay. play don't play it. Don't play it. It's too sad and haunting. Is it too sad? Too sad and haunting. It's melancholy. That's Jonathan and I, uh, Jonathan and I singing the famous, uh, uh, the famous uh, 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 sea hymn nautical hymn for those in peril on the sea we heard a little bit of that last week haunting, and it was it? it was more than haunting it was depressing actually yeah well yeah. <laughs> that's much, it's the end of the world is pretty pretty depressing <laughs> sad but we were talking because uh, we, we we are on this cruise together the jonathan colton cruise yes joko crazy joko cruise crazy one and two and three is coming coming up. yeah when is that I don't know. You have I to have ask the Jonathan. Website. I don't make I have any money on that. Thing. Why can... are you asking me? You don't make any money on that. They really oh, ought to do free, something. I get a free cruise and fun times with my friends. And there I, you go. And I, and I grew a mustache out of it. He said they're getting to the point now where they're going to have to actually buy a boat. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm building a boat for it's them right now. It's so big. Yep. It's an arc of nerds. <laughs> and we'll all cruise the blood wave into, Fantastic. into the next into the next. Fantastic. World. February you know, 10th through things. 17th. We friends, we do things for each other. That's yeah. what it is. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Jonathan's all over my, my audiobook. Yes. Uh, Dick Cavett 
has nothing better to do than come down and... <laughs> he's a Yaley. Yeah, he's a, he's a Yaley. He is, that's right. Did he make that connection? I mean, was that a part of the thing? Was that he thought he would yeah. help a fellow blue? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. There was a whole, there was a whole thing in, in, in my audio book about how uh, Yale people recognize each other and split, and split their money. We, we don't generally talk we about split that their Split their money when they meet each other. Yeah, we try Whatever they have that. in there. Yeah, pockets. Whatever's in the pockets, huh? Just, what do you, what do you, just what do you check. Got? There's nothing. There's no wallet. I'm like yeah. the queen. I don't carry any, uh, any money with me. Me, me neither. People. Yeah. Here, you, yeah. Can, <laughs> you can have my Sharpie. There I'll, you go. I'll split it with you. Yeah. Is this your... Wait a minute. No, no. Because this is your autographic pen. That's, that's just a Sharpie. For heaven's sakes, it's just a Sharpie. It's a go, bronze Sharpie. I can go to, can go to any, any uh, deranged well, millionaire your, supermarket and get Just take your shoes off and relax. Do you mind if I... It's just really... Not the socks. No. He's barefoot on the. You know what's interesting is this. This must be um, something you do a lot because you're barefoot in the uh, author photo as well. On well, the it's of part this. of my guide to dressing like a deranged millionaire. Okay, let's talk about the deranged millionaire because I thought the mustache was the deranged millionaire look, and it's still there. In fact, it's it's spreading. Uh, well, I've only grown more deranged. <laughs> 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 Though I think my funds have depleted somewhat. <laughs> Sub millionaire. Uh, yeah, no, I I, uh, I I came out of the the experience of writing the first two books with my life dramatically changed. I had created this character called the Deranged Millionaire for a series of videos for They Might Be They're Giants. They're very funny. Years ago, when I thought yeah. I had never been. Well, on I haven't television seen before. that They Might Be Giants. This was like I thought it on Funny or Die or somewhere. Oh yeah, you know that was the, that was that was, hysterical. That was later. Oh, thank you very much. Well, yeah. you got there's everybody in the world is waiting for you. I have a hypnotic power. And we should. I'll play that a little bit later. So fun. you did something for John and John. Years ago, years like ago, two thousand, two thousand, back in the old tech TV days, I dare say. Yeah. And uh, before I ever thought that I would ever be on television, I was just a former professional literary agent and writer. What happened there? Well, uh, I'll tell you. You know, I started to work with John and John. Uh, they might be giants. I was doing a little. We're bit gonna of, hold on just a moment. Oh, We're gonna have somebody gonna adjust you. We have a, a special chiropractic unit that's going to come out. My third and fourth arm come in. <laughs> there we go. How about that? So I had been a uh, I had been a, a, a publishing professional, and then yeah. I became a magazine writer. Ah! And then I started writing humor for McSweeney's, ah. uh, 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 located here in the Bay sure. Area. Sure, absolutely. And I started, there's the Dave Eggers uh, uh, connection. Indeed, yeah. He's, he is a, he is a friend and, and indeed a, a, a longtime supporter to him. I'm very grateful. And um, and I'd started writing stuff for McSweeney's and started performing stuff in sort of literary comedy events in new york city is that you know, very so, popular in new york city yeah well you know we're all very wry <laughs> <laughs> uh Big you know, crowds come out for the right oh humor. yeah the arched <laughs> eyebrow set always comes out for the for the for the small chuckles of you literary comedy mildly music. The, the, the famous pipe and sweater comedy yes. of john hodgman <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and that's how I met They Might Be Giants, actually, because they were doing work with Dave Eggers. And I, and I did this deranged millionaire character for them. I didn't realize it was that old. Yeah, no, and it was at a time when I couldn't imagine ever being a, a that deranged... That was your first character. Yeah, it was before I could ever imagine being a deranged hundredaire, never mind a deranged millionaire. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and around that time, I started, I started thinking about these books of trivia. Someone had asked me to write a book of trivia, real trivia. And I love trivia, and I love those old books, The Book of Lists... Uh, big Secrets, William Poundstone's Big Secrets, The People's Almanac, I love all these. Those too. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, love books, that stuff. Books that you factoid would, stuff. Factoid stuff. Uncle John's yeah. Bathroom Reader. Love that stuff. That was, that was the inspiration for my first book, which what? was a, oh yeah, an alma, a technology almanac, oh, and right. I wanted to make it a reader, a bathroom reader. Exactly, just yeah. little little factoids. And and you know how much did we pick up in, in our knowledge? Useful from for cocktail that, parties as a pipe and sweater. Exactly. Set. The, not, the the nine European leaders who died right. while having sex or whatever. You just, exactly. You know, it's stuff that just gets lodged into our brains like shrapnel as we read it as kids in the bathroom or, you know, over the summer or whatever. And so I thought it would be great to do a book like that, but those books exist. So what new can I bring to amazing true facts? Fiction. Uh, amazing what false facts. Mean? Amazing <laughs> false facts. So instead of nine... Uh, instead of nine... <laughs> World leaders who died while having sex it would be nine U.S. presidents who secretly had hooks for hands, <laughs> and how you wouldn't, you know, you would never know, and you would never know because you know no one knew that FDR had a hook for a hand because the press covered it up. Yeah, exactly. It, it was just considered we don't only, we, we don't want to. They only photographed him from the wrist up, exactly. and also his hook was in the shape of a wheelchair. There is a statue, I believe, somewhere in the Midwest with the hook. That you, yeah, you right. So you that. know, so that's exactly absolutely. the, pl the absolutely. pleasure of teasing out something that seems almost plausible but is absolutely. <laughs> 
ridiculous. And so I wrote this book. So I said to the I said to the editor who had asked me, "Would you write a book of actual trivia?" Would well, what if I did something like this? Much, and he much, said, much better. Yeah, and he said, no, thank you. <laughs> and uh, Really? Yeah, he's my editor now, actually. He didn't get the vision that you had? No, I think he understood it, but I think he felt that a book of actual trivia would sell more copies. <laughs> Boy, was he was, wrong. Yeah, well... Or know. maybe not, I don't know. <laughs> but, but book publishing is a business that has the delusion that it is a business. Yeah, do you know? and but, it's, yeah that's a delusion. So, uh, so I took a year to sort of think it through and come up with a real proposal... And sort of to prove the concept to myself. Did you propose three books initially? Um, well, I always wanted to do uh, three because all good books come in trilogies, right. obviously. Right. But I was just happy to do the first book. The Bible. Yeah, for example. For Bible example. 1, 2, and 3. Yep. Oh, and then there's the, the, the Bible Silmarillion, which is the sort of the Yeah, we don't talk about that one. Yeah, that's the one where it's a lot of poetry. We don't yeah, I think that's called the Book of Mormon. <laughs> uh, ooh, it's getting topical. Ooh. Getting topical here. Oh, hello. The dog emerges. You come say here. the word Mormon, he responds immediately. What is this? I'm sorry, say his name again. Ozzy. Ozzy, come here. Come here, Ozzy. I'm telling you, this look would be so much better if you were sitting on my lap and I was just stroking, <laughs> stro <laughs> stroking like Blofeld. <laughs> He oh, is. Wow. That's exactly what he is. And he's bored now. No, so. I think, he, he's, I think he's appropriately skeptical. Oh, you heard me. The, look at the ears. Yeah, that's that's him. That's all right. I know. He's not wearing shoes, My reputation but precedes okay. me. I understand. He's very suspicious. So um, um, how did so, you convince him that this is a good idea, especially three books? Well, I wrote, I, I, I wrote the some portions of it, in, including a piece about the, 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 the famous surgeon's photo of the Loch Ness Monster. Right. You know, that that's that famous photo of the of the Loch Ness monster sort of looking around like right. a periscope. Right. That's real. It was no, it was revealed to be a hoax. Uh, but I mean it was but it really happened. It is re it is something it it's is a, a real, real photograph. It's a real photograph, but of it's a, not of really, a non monster. Right. It's yeah. not really the Loch Ness exactly. monster. Exactly. No, right. no, 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 no. It was revealed to be a hoax, of right. course. I right. mean for years they were wondering how was it done. Right. Finally it was revealed to be a hoax. The the, 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 the truth of it is that uh, there's no way that could be the Loch Ness monster. Because the Loch Ness monster took the photograph. Aha! See, that's see, a twist. That was a twist. Nobody knew. No one knew, and so until they read my book. And then they knew. So I proposed the book to a number of different publishers. The the editor who had who had initially said no, thank you, did did indeed end up offering on it, it's, and 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 has become my editor since, and he's a good friend, Jeff Klosky of Riverhead. It's difficult to tell when you go in and make a proposal, and they laugh, whether they're laughing with you or at you. And, yes. And it turned out they were laughing at you. They were laughing at me, and then they were laughing with, with me. me. And, then, and then when I went on The Daily Show to promote that first they book... They loved it. I was laughing at them. Yes. Ha, 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 ha. So that's when I started to go crazy. <laughs> that's when you became, in fact, the character you'd been playing, The Deranged Millionaire... Over time, because what happened then was, look, what ha I went on The Daily Show to promote yeah. the first book, and then they asked me back yeah. to do comedy on The Daily so you, Show. So this was before you were a regular on The Daily Show? This is how I became Was promoting the, the book. Show. I was a what fan was it of that, The Daily Show. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, that's like a uh, dream course, come true. Yeah, of course. And, wow. You know, John Stewart says, hey, you're pretty funny. Would you like to come back? We had a good time talking, and I think, you know, I had a lot of... A lot of uh, Fake trivia about uh, the hobos of the Great Depression. Yes, which, all uh, the hobo names. Uh, it tickles John Stewart's fancy very much, I gather. So <laughs> he's a fan. He's a hobo fan. Yeah. And uh, and so they asked me to come back and do comedy on the show, which I thought there was a polite thing for them to do. So I said, of course. But I think they <laughs> really, I think they meant, they meant it, it because I've been doing it now for That's fantastic. six years. And then very quickly after that, I was asked to audition for this series of advertisements for a major computer corporation. Which, in which I played the personal computer. Shall not, was shall remain nameless Apple, or shall Apple, not? Oh, Apple you can mention it. Okay. Yeah. I used to love them. <laughs> they changed my life. They gave me the greatest job I've ever had. You used to love them. Well, I, of course I love them. You still love them? Of course I did. Okay. Yeah. So there, there was no breach, no. No. But you played the PC. You didn't play the Mac. Yeah, but that's... So I thought, when I saw you using an iPhone, I thought, that's really not right. He should be using a Windows Do you phone. know how advertising works? <laughs> <laughs> Do you understand that it, no, it's but, kind of made up? <laughs> no, it's not. It, there's a law that it has to be true. I, 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 I used to, when I heard about the ads, I, I was immediately intrigued. First of all, because why were they interested in me? Second of all, um, because I, when, I was a, when I was in my 20s, my friends and I, including Colton, would go to bars yeah. 
We're of legal drinking age, everybody. Of course. We go to bars and get drunk yelling at each other about Mac versus PC. Really? This was a common and, argument. And, and which side of that argument were you? I was always on the on the Mac side. And Jonathan Mac... was the PC guy? Uh, I hope no, our not. friend, uh, our, Some other our guy. friend Devin Emke was the PC yeah, guy. Yeah. And Jonathan just sort of stayed above it all and right. sang little weird <laughs> Did folk he? songs about zombies in the yeah, background or yeah, whatever. But yeah. it was, you know, he was always trying, the, the peacemaker, because he's definitely bi platform. Do you know what I mean? Um, We've all known he's that all, for a he's, while. Right, it's pretty, right? Oh, I'm not breaking any news here, I don't right, think everybody? so. It's pretty okay. obvious, yeah. yeah good. So, um, but this was exactly, I was always of the, of, the, Mac of the Mac persuasion. I would take a lot of heat for it because Devin would say that was for dum-dums. And I was like, I, <laughs> I don't have time. It's fine, to, I'm a dum-dum. Yeah, and this is still, I was, I, when I, I was still working in publishing and we were still using DOS at that time. Right. And I'm like, really, you're going to make this argument? Yeah. This is yeah. what I want to be doing? Yeah. Now, obviously, everything's sort of. Did you audition each other. for that? Of course, uh, of course, yeah. yeah. So they had other people in corduroy suits. N- they had not only other people, but every people. <laughs> it was a big. It was a cattle call. I didn't realize until until afterward because you know I I I weaseled my way I weaseled my way into things. Look at how I'm here. I go from watching tech TV. We were we were told to that now being here at the center, the nerve center. Yeah. Of uh, of of this. You are in the nerve center of this is. right now. But you know, so, I so I went into the audition primarily because I was curious why did they call me. But it was simply that they were. It was a very. I met everybody that I knew in the performing world in New York. In, in the everybody audition. was up for that. And so I just I thought it was. Had a they fun, already selected? I thought just, it was a fun adventure to audition yeah, for this job not? that I would never get. Yeah. yeah, much better the way to approach it. I think. So it was a sheer fluke. It was. Uh, was Justin know, Long already cast? I, I by the time I was offered the job, yes. Okay, he was but you I weren't reading was. against him. It was no other other other, other people. people, and I don't know. All I know is that Phil Morrison, the director of those ads, who directed a movie called Junebug and has a new movie Love coming out with movie. Paul Rudd and, and Paul Giamatti. Love Junebug. Um, he's an amazing guy and a really dear friend. And yeah. he, he, uh, you know, he had seen me on The Daily Show and put my, hat, my name into a very large hat. And I was very lucky to get the job. Did they tell you what they were looking for? Uh, no, but I had an instinctive sense because, you know, I... I I had used PCs and I, underst- and I understood why people liked them. I also understood the cultural sort of friction between Mac users and PC users, and, and I knew that the PC would, as a, as a computer and an embodiment of that ethos, would sort of look down his nose at Mac, even while he couldn't... You know, the, the, the trick of those ads was the PC it was always there to help the Mac. The PC wasn't there to be an antagonist, necessarily. He always thought he was doing the Mac a favor yeah. by showing him how it was really done. Yeah. And that was actually the beauty of it, because it it was antagonistic without actually being antagonistic, right? It was yeah. It was gentle humor. It was the, it was the comedy of of a of you know in a, in a very in a very Colbertian way, sort of a high status yeah, yeah, idiot. Yeah. yeah. Was thinking truthy. he's helping this poor dumb, <laughs> this poor dumb hipster. Here's a here's some uh, and examples. coming up short. Of I mean, I'm a PC. I'm afraid to ask. Well, I was sitting on my desk. Yeah. Someone walked by, carelessly tripped over my power cord, yanked me straight down to the ground. Bam! Yikes. MacBooks come with this power cord that connects magnetically, so when it gets pulled, it just pops right off. Everything's just kind of thought out, you know, like the tiny built-in ice I can't. My life is flashing before my eyes. I see a sunset in a field of beautiful wheat. Isn't that your screensaver? (laughs) Yeah. These are, the, these are great. I think the sunset there, in a field of beautiful wheat may have been a Justin Long line. Really? So there was some ad-libbing going on? Uh, in that? Uh, we would have tons of fun sort of playing with the scripts. And we usually would sort of go very far beyond them and then come back. Because right. they were very well written to begin with. Sure. And we usually come back to some version of it. But I feel like Justin, Justin is a really funny guy. And I think that... You know, it, it might be lost on people who saw those ads, but if you see any of his movies or you ever see him in, in interviews, he's really funny. Yeah, and, he's a, and he's a very personable. And a very good friend. But did he come here? No. So let's stop talking about him. <laughs> Why are we talking Is about Is this that your guy? corduroy suit? <laughs> Which one? Yeah, there. Oh, I was looking at this photo book. I made an iPhone. Right? <laughs> well, that's that's oh, cool. Oh, sure. No, 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 I didn't. Not. That's not... <laughs> That's wardrobe. That's well, none of, go on. None rip of the, it in half. Well, that's my it's red suit. Beautiful. <laughs> that's that you I did. Don't care about arts and crafts. You like work. Would it hurt you uh, to loosen your necktie every once in a while and have a little fun? Oh, fun. We tried that once. It was nothing but pain and frustration. So what do you, what do you think? It's good. <laughs> There's one. I don't know if I, it's on this uh, reel. This is a reel of a bunch of them. Where you crawl into a hole or crawl out of a hole. Yeah, that may have been on my private video. <laughs> Let's see if I can find that one. 
Um, this is a comp. People love this so much. There are on YouTube compilations of these. There's even, this is one oh, of my favorites. The, mm -hmm. This is one of my favorites. Wow. Yeah, I can even talk to animals. Hey, happy holidays, little bunny. Where are you headed? I'm going to the Apple Store for some last minute gifts. <laughs> Oops. Oh, I'm sorry. How did that happen? Clumsy me. Must have been fun to be that. Get a chance to be a little that. Little trivia the voice of the rabbit was Morgan Freeman. <laughs> you know, he's so distinctive. I know. You almost can't miss it. Oh, yeah, yeah. People love his voice. <laughs> John Hodgman is our guest. I can smell my own feet. I'm very sorry to have put this so much. No, no. So, I think it's in the book. I know I read it. These, that you can actually, it's a physical fact. You cannot smell your own feet. The, the reason that I, the, the, what happened was that once the ads changed my life dramatically and then the books and everything else, and suddenly I became this famous minor television personality completely unexpectedly. And then, you know, suddenly I became this sort of in, financially independent, deranged millionaire that I never thought I would be. Isn't that wonderful? I'm so happy And the happy secret for to you. dressing like a deranged millionaire is you, you take off your shoes, for example. You dress for your own comfort. You don't, no, no, you don't you care about what other people you do. You shouldn't in fact, ever. It's, it's not even so important that you be comfortable as it is you make other people uncomfortable. And also, I think, speak... <laughs> now the dog is interested. Yes, he, my dog. He I says, think, thank you. I smell ham. I know there's ham in here somewhere. Uh, <laughs> Go on. So these are the original from uh, They Might Be Giants uh, that apparently are now in front of your... a very young version of me. In front of your die, I think. Right. Let's see here. We'll probably get a cease and desist from Funny or Die. Or maybe not. If it never plays, we'll be fine. No. I can describe it for you. <laughs> would, you would you walk us through it? <laughs> well, lately, yeah, I think the I think that the funny or die thing that you want to show is the the trailer. That's the one that I, I love. Made. That was the, for the book. And Tom, Tom Sharpling directed that, and that was a similar situation to the audiobook, where I um, I Tom had this idea that there were so many book trailers and, and comedy videos on that used cameo appearances. Tom Sharpling, who's the host of the best show on WFMU, one of the greatest and most important comedy things in existence of all time. Look it up. But Tom was like, "Well, why don't we? Why don't we just? Why don't we do some celebrity cameos? But we'll just call in every every favor we have, and just burn through every cameo, all at once." When I saw them, and well, let's just show let's just oh. show you the video because it's. And so I turned to my wife, Suzanne Plachette, and said, "That is all. There, finished. Computer, send this to the computer and print it out." Acknowledged. Shall I get Jonathan Colton on the phone? That's the what? voice of Jonathan. No, I'm not entirely helpless. Is it? Yeah, that's the actual Whatever voice. Whatever you say, master. Yes, I'm calling for internet superstar and feral mountain man, Jonathan Colton, please. Ah, Jonathan. It's your friend, John Hodgman, a deranged millionaire. Listen, Jonathan, I just finished my final book of complete world knowledge, and it's coming out November 1st. Yes, that's right. That's just about a year before the end of the world. <laughs> that's right. Ragnarok. I'm really excited about it. Listen, Jonathan, the publisher's being really annoying about this. They don't want me to print just one copy. Right. They want me to print many copies, really. Take it to the people. Well, the thing is, to do that, I'm going to have to leave my house. So, oh, thank you, Jonathan. Yes. Where do you want to meet? The foyer? The map room? The movie loft? The polo room? The bocce courts? Where? Ferret skeleton room. Jonathan, you know that place creeps me out. Okay, fine, fine. You know what? I'll just meet you there. See you in a minute. Now we've lost the, uh... There we go. Be with you. In your electric dreams, robot. Start the theme music. I'm on my way. He had a name. He had an unlikely name. Yeah, the deranged millionaire. The deranged millionaire. House. It's, uh, oh, there you go. Th how did that happen? I think it's funny or die finally. Uh, pulled the <laughs> finally, he finally died. Yeah, finally expired. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had a, <laughs> it actually happened. I didn't think yeah, uh, we had a short-term hosting situation. <laughs> I didn't there. think that right. would happen. That um, was, uh, where that, is that house? Is that uh, your house? No, it's not my house. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, that's a mansion that is for rent. It's an actual on the mansion. Upper west side of Manhattan. I, I got it. We, I think the, we've got the, it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. 
So it's not movie magic. I love this. The library. That is New York from the public library. Right. <laughs> well, it's in there at 7 o'clock in the morning or something. Well, that's nice. Because normally you can't go in there barefoot till after hours. No, exactly so. And here's Justin being very game. I love it. I love it. Justin? Mm-hmm. It is Justin, right? <laughs> Sorry, I, I didn't recognize you with my new mustache. Haji! Oh my God, it's so good to see you. Have you been here the whole time? Yes. Oh. Wait a minute. I feel terrible. That's okay. Well, we're back. We're back in business. Let's I, do this. Oh <clears throat> boy. I... Hello. Hello. No, I'm no, 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 no. You're, you're Justin Long, and it's, it's time to go. Come on. No. Yeah. Had he said I'm a mag. Let me get you out of here. Would you? Okay. Did you? I know a place we can go. I've never heard from them about it. <laughs> I think every it's all right. Time, they don't own the white void. No, they don't. That's called a white psych, by the way. White let's, psych. Uh, let's yeah. sit you down. But here we are in the celebrity camp. Now, wait a minute. Now, you've got to see these Bruce celebrities. Shields, John Lutz, Jason hey, Jones, Dick Nas, Dick, Dick Cabot. No, no. Uh, Everybody, this is Jackson Justin Public Long. Adventure Brothers. Hi, Justin. Sam so, Deep, all my Paul famous Paul friends, Rudd, thanks for Fred hanging there. I, I know you've been down w. here for a while. Uh, unfortunately, I, I don't have any celebrity cameo work for you today. Uh, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I just finished my new book, and um, i got to take it to the people. It's Vernon Reed of kind of a solo act, but uh, uh, hang in there, have some chips. I'll, I'll check in on you in a couple of days. Okay. Thanks, guys. You got this. Recognize this, John? Most, um, <laughs> yes, the, range the most the amazing oh. group of celebrities, and they just sat there. Yeah, we wasted their time. <laughs> <laughs> it's mind blowing. It was fantastic. It's fantastic. That's yeah. a, that's well, a we had some we had some Uts chips for them. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm waiting for my free cheese balls. Huh? <laughs> it goes through the Daily Show set. Gold is diamond yeah. encrusted, and diamonds are boulders. covered in gold. Where, where all the children climb rocks in Brooklyn. He lost a lot of money. And then, uh, on the that's the that's the main reading room again in the library. The idea is that I'm walking, I'm Through trying to house. find my my way to the ferret skeleton room, yeah, which is there. Is. There it is. There's yeah. Jonathan. There's a... That's our our Buckaroo, Buckaroo Banzai homage. That little hand. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then uh, and this. Uh, and then we go out to Times Square. Barefoot in Times Square, the most liberating, Ooh, attention, most liberating feeling in the world. <laughs> you the and the naked nigh. cowboy. Filmed without a single nigh. permit. <laughs> Specifically, the end of my trilogy of complete world knowledge. Beautiful New York City. Prepare yourself. I should have gotten some money from New Girl coming. for this one. <laughs> that is all is coming. That is all is coming November 1st. You can't get Listen away from New Girl. It's everywhere. Oh, I know, right? That is all is coming. Mama Mia. Tweet Mama it Mia. Out. Yeah. Send it out. Let them know. My name is John Hodgman. I finished my book. I finished my book. You're next. You're next. You're next. <laughs> <laughs> Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Love I have to it. say, standing Love it. and yelling, screaming out loud in the middle of Times Square, barefoot, without a permit, most exciting. There's adrenaline. police everywhere. Yeah. And and we, it, it, I was convinced that we were going to be I'm arrested surprised. at any Did you moment. get at any point? Apparently, you can film whatever you want in Times Square so long as you don't put a camera down on the ground. Right. Which sounds like fake trivia, but I believe that it's I true. I think it's true. And, it, it, right. and, and it's a small camera, probably, so it doesn't... Yeah. You I could, think you we had be a, a st- tourist. You don't, you're not necessarily doing yeah, a movie. I'm, just, I'm a, t- I'm I'm just a tourist a... with a sound guy and a camera operator That's and a all. director. Yeah. yeah. Well, some people do that. And then there was a moment where we were sitting in one of Michael Bloomberg's... Uh, Bloomberg, Michael Bloomberg, the mayor, new, yeah, the mayor of New York City's, you know, he's he's taken over huge, uh, like three or four lanes of every street to make them pedestrian cafes, basically. This, when did that happen? Oh, in the past five years or so. Oh, I've got to go back bike to lanes New York. everywhere, and m- much of Times Square, which used to be actual traffic lanes, is now uh, a pedestrian area where you sit down at a little rickety That's coffee fantastic. table and have a and have a coffee. Just like Paris. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's exactly. Plus New Girl. Yeah, well, and you get your, you know, cabs run over your feet. And it's very, it's very unnerving to sit there. And we were sitting there, and a police cruiser stopped right in front of us. And two, uh, two police officers got out and started walking right for us. And I'm like, this is it. We're being shut down. And then it was like a cartoon. They immediately diverted about two seconds before us and then went over and got, um, got some coffee. <laughs> they like doing that to the tourists. Yeah, yeah. They just head straight they totally, for them. They and totally... Then- Veer off. Yeah. It's like sharks. But like, I really recommend that you go out there barefoot in Times Square. <laughs> I mean, no, wait a minute. I don't, I don't want are, you to assume. Have you washed your feet since? 
No, but you know, it's fine. There's nothing. There's not a lot out there. You take a little care. It's, it's clean. Yeah. Next, you'll be you'll be you'll be swimming in the river. But it's you know that was to to be able to you know have this weird career that went from you know I used to write about popular culture. I obviously love popular culture and to create something and have it resonate. That's fantastic. And the world is an amazing feeling. And then to meet people that you admire so much, you know, and, and to bring them into a room and then. And then keep them so, <laughs> prisoner there for a while. It's really fantastic. So, how, what was the connection? How did you know them? Did you? Did you... They're all people that I met through through living in New York City over time. That's I, what I always thought is that everybody in New York City kind of knows each other. Yes, that's exactly yeah. right. And we talk about you primarily. <laughs> you know, it's a big secret society where we where we just talk trash about California. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know the da- the Daily Show. Uh, ha- 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 Opened quite a few doors for me Absolutely. to meet the people that I admire in sure. the world, which is exciting. And, you're and, the, working... and the ads did as well. I mean, the, one of the most surreal experiences in my life, you know, I, I, I was going to a, a party and, uh, and, and seeing uh, Chuck D from Public Enemy. And I grew up, you know, in the, in the 80s and early 90s. And that was my, when I was really tuned into what the vibrant rap scene at that time. Right. Not that it's unvibrant now, but that was my period. And like Public Enemy, made me think about a lot of things very differently and I think he's a, kind of a genius and I kind of went up to him like I just wanted to say I'm just a big fan he's like I know who you are and I was like the PC and I'm like oh this is very exciting but also weird <laughs> <laughs> you don't mind be, people saying I mean because that's not at all it was it, you know it was your PC yeah it, 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 I'm so happy that it happened yeah. do you know what I mean it's allowed yeah. me to, to first of all and most importantly to work with Justin and with Phil and you know, we did it for four years, and it was an amazing, wow, amazing and exciting job. I mean, it obviously transformed my life and my career in almost entirely uh, positive ways. I can't think otherwise. I have several bathrooms now that are tiled with old iPhones. <laughs> and, uh, and I, you know, and I, get to, and I get to meet you, and I get to, to do what I love to do, which is, you know, weird books of fake trivia and, and, uh, and, and, and showing up on, on sort of fake television talk shows. This is it. Yeah. How many uh, ads did you end up doing total? I think that, um, I think that the, the ones that made air were coming up on 70, and 60, there's, there's some the that 60, never, 70. Never yeah. Made it? Oh, yeah, we would shoot. We'd shoot did you ever meet few. Jobs? Did he ever come to the shoots? N- he never came to the shoots, and, and, and I, I, <laughs> I, uh, I was, um, it was a very sad... <sighs> So I was at The Daily Show the first, well, it was probably in 2007, because the iPhone was about to come out. And, uh, and I was working on a sketch, you know, a desk chat, as we call them, for the, and I was uh, in John's office. And as we broke to go work on the script some more, John said, you know, um, Steve Jobs is coming here on Monday. Mm. And I said, is he going to be a guest on the show? He said, no, no he's just, he's just coming. He's a fan of the show. He's going to be in New York. He wants to, he has the prototype for the iPhone. He wants to sort of show it and everything. Wow. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's amazing. He said, well, you should come. You know, because as a contributor to the show, I'm not there all the time. I only come in to work on the pieces that I that I right. perform. So he said, you should come in that day. And I'm like, well, I, I don't know. You know, like, this is still, that was still a very new job for me. I really wanted to keep it. <laughs> I didn't think that the secret to keeping that job was Surprising thro- thro- throwing curveballs to Steve Jobs. <laughs> no, not a good idea. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> just like Steve and, and, and John are, are, in the, are in the office and just all of a sudden, I come around the corner going, hello, <laughs> it's me. So I said, well, you know what, I'll, I'll think about it. He's like, you know, you have a right to be here. You, you work here. You should come in. I said, I'll think about it over the weekend, and I'll, and I'll decide. And over the weekend, I thought about it, and I just decided, you know what, if Steve John wants, wants to meet me. I made two, I made two terrible uh, assessments. One, if Steve Jobs wants to meet me, he knows where to find me. That's probably true. And then the terrible assessment Mark was... Slope. Everybody knows Yeah, well, of course. And the, ter- I, uh, the terrible assessment, though, was that I would have all the time in the world to meet Steve Jobs. Mm, not so. And I made the decision, and I, and I felt good about the decision. And I was saying, I had, some, I had dinner with some friends that, that Monday night after Steve had been in the, in the office, and I had not gone in. And I was explaining those two assessments. And, and, you know, it would have been a thrill to be sitting there in a room with John Stewart and Steve Jobs going, I certainly saw this coming in my life. <laughs> But I felt like, you know what, it's, this, is, this is better, this is cool. You're cool. And then as I was explaining it, I realized, oh, I, had, I never really did tell John Stewart that I wasn't coming in. Uh. And I'm like, well, he probably forgot all about it anyway. So I call the next, the next day to Jen Flans. Oh, no. 
executive, one of the executive producers, and I'm like, hey, Jen, it's me. She's like, where were you? Oh, no. <laughs> and apparently, they were waiting for you. Apparently, well, apparently they paged, they paged the building for some time. Like, oh, no. Yeah, it was like Bueller, Bueller. <laughs> PC. Bueller, yeah, PC. PC. And finally, John had to go, oh, I guess he's doing something else oh. today. So I was too cool for Steve Jobs that day. Well, there's something to be said for that. But we had, we had, you know, I, I was, I, 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 uh, I uh, had email exchanges with him that were very pleasant. When I did, when I when I got the iPhone, I remember sitting there. It was like eleven o'clock at night on the iPhone day, two thousand seven, and just looking at this thing. And it's and it's hard to remember just how huge. brain breaking it was. Yeah, yeah. No, it was huge. You know, do you know what I mean? Just Absolutely. How, what a I what a vividly. huge leap. And this is yeah. not Apple fanboyism. I think anyone who appreciates technologies saw that and saw oh, yeah. a, a future of a thing. If you went from a Blackberry to that, you'd say, yeah. oh, Yeah, this revelation. is a huge, big leap in terms yeah. of, in terms of, you know, and this is why we are all becoming cyborgs now because we're, we're every, all of our memory and our, and our geographical skills and everything else is now downloaded to, to a device, whether it's from Apple or, or yeah. otherwise. But, and I remember sitting there going, you know, I'm a very lucky person and, and this is a really amazing adventure that I've been on so far. And, you know, I ought to write Steve a note and I had his email address from a from a previous exchange that we had had. And I, I wrote him, I just said, hey, I just want to say I got this iPhone. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And I'm like, well, time to go to bed. Bing. Immediate, immediate reply that said, I'm so glad you like it. From Steve. Or from his address. No, it's from Steve. Well, right. Well, that was the thing. It's like, so glad you like it. What is your favorite ringtone? And I was like, oh, well... This is, cannot be from Steve Jobs. This right. is the day the iPhone came right. out. He's got other things how many, to do. How many, how many things do you have to do? How many emails is he getting <laughs> yeah. today? Right. So either this is a robo response or an assistant, <laughs> right. but maybe it's him. And I have to operate on the assumption that it's him because I already pissed him off once. <laughs> so I wrote, I wrote again. I know you have like 30 other shows to record today, but this no, is just... No, a, no, 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 go on and no, on, no, no. I know you have, I know you have 17, 17 shows an hour here, so, I and you host yeah. them all, and I yeah. appreciate that. Yeah. So, I, so, I, uh, so I, I'm like, well, I got I to gotta come up with something good. So I get out of bed, and I go to my, one of my 17 desktop computers that I had at that time, and I write, um, and I was like, okay, uh, well, uh, my favorite ringtone is crickets, because <laughs> you know that one, on yeah, the, yeah, it sounds yeah. like crickets, I'm like... Uh, I, I think it's it's great. Um, the only problem is it's a little confusing. I think I have to change it because it's a little confusing because I usually carry a bunch of live crickets on my person at all right. times. Right. So I kind of I may have to change it. Yeah. Um, anyway, thanks again. <laughs> <laughs> Send. I'm getting up to go back to bed. All of a sudden, ding. ding. I'm like, now what, Steve Jobs? <laughs> He's so annoying. And then I go back and he says, well, mine is, uh, mine is ascending. Uh-huh. Which is the one that goes... And I'm like, that is the worst <laughs> of those ringtones. <laughs> well, like, he clearly has no taste. That's terrible. Clearly. But I couldn't write that. So no. finally I had to say, well, thanks again, Steve. <laughs> nice talking to you. I'm going to going go to, to bed, bed now. <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah. so. Yeah. But it was so... And, and again, it was one of those moments where I was like, that's really funny and... You know, someday when I meet him, we'll laugh about this. But of course, it didn't. And I, I now my ringtone is ascending because yeah, in honor of Steve. Yeah. And the, now that the crickets matured. Yeah. No, I no longer carry crickets around anymore because right. of the mess. Cricket poop. John Hodgman dot com. He is our guest today, and his book that is all. And there is an occasion for this because yesterday, not only did the paperback version come out, but Audible released. Uh, the audio version, yes, which you narrate, must be fun though, because these are not just like you reading the book. Oh yeah, you sitting, sitting sitting in a booth for hours on end. Nothing like it. Speaking into a, into a tin can. <laughs> At least they told me that's that's how it is. <laughs> Talking done. to that, yeah, <laughs> it still says beans. Uh, no, it was it's an ama- it was amazing. Stephen because, Fry is on this. Yes, and uh, Stephen Fry he probably is, did it in London. Though. He did it in London yeah. and, and and beamed it in. Yeah. Um, but, but that, still. you know, again, it's, it, here is a situation where, and that's one that, that, that's a connection that was made precisely because of my experience with Apple. Because yeah, and he's a Mac a fan. Yeah, yeah. Mac fan. Yeah. And so we had, I had, I had, I had, I had visited with him over there in England and had done a very silent, uh, 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 uh guest spot on QI, my favorite uh, that's quiz show. a great show. show, which we cannot get in the States No, because we're too dumb. Maybe that's we're, it. Yeah, no, no, that's why. 
Yeah. We're too dumb. We yeah, we wouldn't get it. We couldn't possibly like something no. like that. Too, it's too. It's not wry enough. Right, exactly. So, yeah. um, so, st- so it was great to be able to, you know, pull out all the stops and, and call all the people that I was I mean, huge an fans of. List. And, so do they um, each do little a little bit or? Well, like so, Jonathan and I will sit in the in the room and, and we'll just sort of I'll narrate the book to him basically, and he'll provide reaction. Whereas John Hamm and Stephen Fry and Brooke Shields and uh, Sarah Vowell uh, Love her. Uh, uh, did a did a sketch that I had written in which they, they all they're all members of a reality show that I that I'm pitching a, a reality show about competitive hoarders that I'm pitching. And they, <laughs> <laughs> they play the celebrity contestants. I think Brooke Shields plays Gary Busey, if I'm trying to remember correctly. Uh, Rachel Maddow comes by, and, and we drink alcohol together because she's a cocktail person. Apparently. Dick, Ca- I... Dick Cavett came by for a little um, a little uh, radio magic, a little non-visual radio magic. Um, radio, ma- radio magic is a lost art form, by the way. <laughs> Is you know, yeah. Oh, yeah. There were, used to be tons of amazing radio magicians. L- like now, what is my, now? What is the card? Yeah, exactly. And, and and it's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. Well, because you won't believe what I have up my sleeve. Exa- well, exactly. It's, it's all that except for this. You just, <laughs> you just it's all in the, you it's just the radio, say it. ra- magic theater no, of the there mind. There really wasn't radio. Of course, magicians. there was. But the the trick was, you needed to have a really good assistant. What was called a shouter. This is the person who would react to the magic. Oh, my God. Exactly. Why, it's magic. <laughs> the devil, you say. How is that possible? No, he, he did it. He picked my card, everyone who can't see this. <laughs> and now he's produced a dove out of a croissant or whatever. So that was we the most We ought to try part. that. And then the other part was, of course, most of the magic was all Foley work. Do you know what I mean? Yes. So that's... the sound of shuffling cards was people breaking up sticks of celery. <laughs> so much easier you know I mean? than actually... Yeah. Shuffling cards. Yeah. Yeah. You want to know the most esoteric joke I've ever made? <laughs> no, I'd the like to hear fam- though. The most famous ra- radio magic trick of all time yeah. was using Foley, obviously, to Foley sound effects in order to create the illusion. The most famous radio magic trick of all yeah. time, Hulk running. Very esoteric. Look it up. Hulk running. Hulk running. Hulk running. It, will it be on the internet if I you look saved, for it? I think you saved the picture. Hulk running. It's a worry. People it's have the way internet. over they'll, my head. They'll get it. It's probably like a QI. I just—it's a reference to a film. It's a reference to a movie that I don't even think is available on video <laughs> right now. <laughs> John's book is av- available on Audible.com. In fact, this would be a good time to take advantage of our Audible offer. I'm going to sneak a commercial in. This is going to be so painless. Oh shoot! Now, but see, they've given it away by putting in the lower third graphic announcing. Oh. That we are in fact offering a well, free audio book. I'm, I'm sure there are some of your viewers and listeners who can't uh, read. They don't so know. why don't you explain to them? Yeah, well, they're listening at home. Oh, right. And they don't know. Oh, he put the lower third in. Again, radio magic. There you magic. go. Magic. Audiblepodcast.com. Modern slash... romance. Good good one. Good sound. Got it. Modern romance. Modern in the chat romance. Room. Good sound. Got That's it. That's the re- Hulk running. Look right, up now Hulk I have to watch the YouTube. movie. It's modern... one of the funniest scenes in movie dumb. <laughs> From modern romance, Ooh, I like I like this look of having my regular glasses over my shooting glasses. I feel like Swifty Lazar. You do. If you put one on top, you could be the guy from NFL Films. It'd be and then perfect. Maybe I can add these on too. There we go. <laughs> All right. Was well, he Ricky Jay? Will come over to my brownstone and educate you. I've met Ricky Jay. Have you? Yeah, that was very exciting. You have He's a, a fan. Everyone, very you know, everyone exciting loves, life. Everyone loves The Daily Show, and and I, you know, I just as as a remora that feeds on the belly fat of all of these great cultural enterprises, uh, The Daily Show, uh, television advertising, uh, the remake of Arthur, uh, this, this uh, whatever this is, you know, I get to I get to experience. You're in the remake of Arthur. I get to experience. Uh, yeah. Oh well, yeah. You didn't know that. No. Tell me about well, that. What well, were you? We fixed it. Let me let me that, play. We fixed that movie, Arthur. And we made it. We made it right. Made it right because he. Yeah, it was you know, Dud, that Dudley Moore. So no, here is. Uh, 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 it was fun. It was here's fun. Hulk running. <laughs> it's Albert Brooks is a is a saying? movie editor and I he's love Albert Brooks. and he's and he's fine. trying to do no, the Foley on a science fiction movie he's doing, right. starring you George Kennedy. Well. <laughs> I want to get some kind of pounding, some kind of uh, noise when he's coming through that corridor like he's running hard and heavy. Pounding, I guess, is what I want. Pounding. Do you have any stock stuff that's good? Why don't you try to put in the Hulk? <laughs> we should hear that. Let's, that could work. Let's try the Hulk. The Hulk's too slow. Well, we have Hulk running, don't we? Hulk running. Let's try that. Even running is too slow. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's try it. Maybe we'll get lucky, okay? 
Put up the Incredible Hulk on effects number three. Here it comes. You want Buzz Standard Hulk? No, Hulk running. <laughs> Standard Hulk? Take no, a few Hulk, Hulk oh. running. I don't now think wait. he's going to find it. All I bet he does. He always seems to eventually. <laughs> I'm going to break now. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to go to my car, right? I'll be back in a minute. Want a cup of coffee? Well, all right, I've got a mistake. I got I'm uh, calling a doctor. Okay, you want to hear these hopes now? Uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. All right, here it comes, Hulk running. Let's hear what this sounds like. All right. I think it's a waste of time. Good. We'll see it. Okay, let's go. Projector. What is that? I told you, it's too slow. Too slow? The guy screaming. He didn't say that. He said Hulk running. Well, why didn't Hulk scream in? That's this, the effect. This, the so, thing is, this okay. is probably very much uh, what it's like. We're going to have to do this ourselves, yeah. all right? Making all right. movies. I suspect so. <laughs> it's probably actually just... I don't know. I wasn't in the Foley room for <laughs> Arthur the remake. For Arthur the remake. <laughs> Hulk running. <laughs> That is all Albert is the name Brooks. of the book. Go to Audible. Here's the deal. Get it free. You should still get, like, a cut if they get it for free, right? What's that? Yeah, sure. I get a yeah. cut of nothing. <laughs> Thank you. 20% of zero. That is all is the name of the book. So here's the deal. You go to audiblepodcast.com slash triangulation. You're going to sign up for the gold plan. This is all a sneaky way of doing this. You're going to sign up for the gold plan. But if you go to that website and you sign up, the first month's free. The first credit's free. The first book's free. You can cancel it any time. Pay nothing. But the, you get to keep the audio of That Is All by John Hodgman. If you are not an Audible member yet, this is a great opportunity to basically take John for everything he's worth. Audiblepodcast.com slash triangulation. Otherwise, it's twenty four forty seven. The forty seven's yours, the I 40, think. I, I get, <laughs> you get the 47. I get 20% of the 47 cents. <laughs> Uh, no, I, I have the other two books on my Audible, and it's just fantastic. In fact, um, you should get all three. There is my expertise. Sure. Uh, and uh, what is it? All look, Everything you 20, need to... Look, oh. I, I encourage everyone to do whatever it takes to keep the lights on here. Go over to Audible, sign up. It will make us a, a little Get money. the Executive Gold Double Five Diamond Plan or exactly. whatever it is. Exactly. Get the da- free download. I'll be thrilled if anyone listens to it. But I'm going to also say, uh, 2447... Cameras, you hearing this? Yeah. This, this thing is 17 hours long. It's it's less than a well, it's a little more than a buck an hour. I'm giving you I'm giving you a 17, 17 hours is worth it, of wait uh, a minute. worth of entertainment. Is it really that long? It's uh, yeah. Well, it's, you uh, added quite a bit because this isn't that long a book. It's about 11 hour. It's about 11. Well, you read it out loud and see how it goes. <laughs> Well, I guess <laughs> no, but it's only wait a minute. It's 964 pages, so these must be very thin. Oh no, that's not that's not entirely accurate. You see the it's the last page is not page 964, but the first page is uh, 609. Yeah, 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 cuz it picks up the page numbering for the other two books. So you've in total written 964 pages. Oh, well, now that the paperback is out it's over 1000. So I, you know, that's I beat fantastic. the Lord of the Rings. That's all I care about. That's fantastic. Um, but you know, this I'm very uh, you know, Jonathan sings on this thing, John Roderick of the Long Winters sings on the all the audio Oswald. Pat Oswald does the most hilarious Marlon Brando that I've ever heard, <laughs> and the most hilarious Gary Bu- uh, 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 Nick Nolte that I've ever heard. Um, John Darnielle of Mountain Goats wrote an original hour-long composition. You've got John Flansburg on here. Flansburg's on it. Well, the Deranged Millionaire song is is a They Might Be Giant song. Oh, but, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. He wrote that based on the character that I did in those uh. early videos, and then I came back and I said, can I use that as the theme song for this book? So, so audible, you know, audiblepodcast.com slash triangulation. I'm sure they're thrilled because here we have the author himself, and it's a chance to, uh, to get you on uh, Audible, and I think you're going to love it. And get the book. Get the book. We're just joking around. He, will there be a Well, you know book? how I loathe advertising. But I know. In this case, I'll, I'll support yeah. you and I'll support... <sighs> advertising. So horrible. You know, I just want to help out John Hamm. That's the main thing. <laughs> he needs the money. Poor Did guy. Did you see the photograph that I sent of me and John Hamm together? No. You mailed that to me? It was from behind the, behind the scene. I emailed it to Karsten. Oh, do we have... You put the, it up on a website or whatever. Do we have that picture of John Hamm and uh, John Hodgman together? Your we podcast, do. Judge John Hodgman. I forgot yeah. about that. Oh. Fanta- oh, there it is. Yeah, see? That was backstage. Everyone says we look so much alike. Well, I was going to say, it's hard to tell who's who. Yeah. If it weren't for the facial hair, I might John- not know. <laughs> John Hamm is the one wearing the hat, and I'm the, I'm the one cringing over like Gollum. <laughs> Were you actually doing a Gollum? Yeah. 
<laughs> That's how I feel around John Hamm. Yes, yeah, so do we all. He is. This, have you met him? No. He's the sweetest guy in the world. Is he? Very, very funny guy. Oh, interesting. Has, has a real love. I'm a huge and, fan. And knack for comedy. An amazing actor. Really? He's 14 feet tall. Mm -hmm. uh, totally handsome yeah. dude. And no, a jock. That's right. Whereas I am, yeah. I am a, a nerd. And, well, just, and he's one of those people when it's in the room and you just instinctively, in an evolutionary way, yeah, want to yeah. please him. You, like, you know Everything okay, John? Alpha dog Can is... I get you anything? Yeah. You know? Yeah. I adore him so much. Yeah. I don't know what he sees in me, honestly. <laughs> he obviously loves you. Well, I don't know. That's, that's pretty good. I, so have, Judge... I, have, I, have, I have a lot of incriminating information. Are you him. doing any more of the Judge John Hodgman uh, shows? Yeah, I do it every week. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, boy, just because I don't have my own... Weird headquarters a, in Petaluma. I can't. Headquarters. So it doesn't count as a podcast? <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Netcast. Netcast. So sorry. Netcast, oh, so sorry. Oh, so sorry. Uh, we don't use that. So, Judge John Hodgman, the idea is that he, somebody submits to you a conundrum. Yeah. And you cut, th you cut the Gordian knot and solve It's like the people's court. It's the people's court. So, uh, my friend Jesse Thorne, the host of Public Radio's mm -hmm. Bullseye, has mm -hmm. his own. His and the, own and the, pod net, netcast empire called Maximum Fun. Maximumfun.org. Yes, exactly so. Which means he's nonprofit. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Believe me. <laughs> and, uh, and there I am uh, without my mustache. And, uh, and this so, is a and so, great show. I, well, thank you very it much. It might be my favorite thing that you do. Oh, that's very kind. There's it's something been, about it. I just, 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 I can't stop laughing. It's been it. such a nice thing to do because, you know, basically people call in, they'll have a dispute, and the disputes range from like, uh, my, my, my friend constantly steal, <laughs> if he find, if he finds takeout food at the Chinese restaurant we go to, he found some takeout food abandoned on top of the cigarette machine and he took it home and ate it. And he wants, and, and is that okay? And no, the answer is no. Um, whether people should, uh, and then some people, there was a long debate over whether or not a, a machine gun is a robot. <laughs> Just, you know, people call up with real disputes <laughs> uh, and I and I try to settle them in a, in a binding uh, fake court of internet justice. Do they do they agree ahead of time that they will uh, your your decision is fine? Well, they they just like everyone they say whatever they want to on the internet. I don't know if they mean it. <laughs> they might not. Yeah, exactly. They, they may. They might for, not. As all, as all, for all I know, they're 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 not even people. They're just robots <laughs> powered by Zappos. Jesse's pretending that there was a guy. There's a very there's a very popular social media, uh, social uh, social network. This guy had a dispute with his friend because his friend wasn't on this social network. Like and Facebook or whatever. Let's just say like, like Facebook. Facebook. Like Facebook. Right, exactly. So his friend wasn't on this social network, and he wanted his friend to be on the social network because he was constantly having to explain the in-jokes among their circle of friends mm. that this dude was missing on the thing. Mm -hmm. And I made a joke saying, well, look, please don't buzz market the social network. on Like, if you're part of the, the, the social network street team... And you're sneaking onto my podcast to buzz market right. and no. No. And he said, no, 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 no. Ha, ha, ha. Hilarious. We all had a good laugh. And then he starts going on. Then he starts going on. So it just seems to me that he would enjoy being on the social network because there are so many ways to share photographs oh, and good times with your friends. No. I think he was actually buzz marketing. He was, I think was actually a, doing it. Yeah, I think there was actually like a That's secret so buzz pathetic. market. That's so pathetic. It was a good show, though. <laughs> Maybe he was pretending to be a buzz marketer. Yeah, no. Maybe he was spinning you. There was a moment, though, where I was just like, you're really doing this, aren't you? You were really buzz marketing a social network that I shall not mention because that's not, you know how I loathe advertising, everybody. It's not in me. Not in him. Not one bit. But thank you so much for mentioning that. It's a lot of fun. And, and uh, Oh, it's a great show. Can I mention a couple of other things? Do, and then we're going to let the uh, the audience at home ask uh, questions Are they going to ask you. questions? Yeah, you don't have to read them. I'll read them. Okay. <laughs> one pair of glasses, probably sufficient. Uh, but could, is there anything else you want to plug before we go? We go to the questions. Just a couple of things that I would like people to know about. Yes. Human beings of the internet, you like Jonathan Colton, of course you do. You're on the internet. Yeah. And here I am too. You watch me sometimes. I'm on television occasionally. Did you know, if you're in the eastern uh, part of the country, specifically Massachusetts, my home state, Colton and I are appearing for the first time together in over a year. Wow. Yeah. On November second in uh, Northampton, Massachusetts. My adopted hometown, November third in Boston, Massachusetts, my actual hometown. I sure would love to see you all there. And if you if you if you come and you say uh, that you, you heard it on on, on uh, triangulation, or any of the ten thousand <laughs> twit netcasts that you might listen to, uh, I'll give you something uh, out of my pocket. It might be lint, <laughs> it might be a sharpie. <laughs> there'll be some premium for you. There'll be some. In, there'll be something in it for you. <laughs> Maybe one of 10,000 free Audible audiobooks that Leo's always given away. It'll be something. It'll be something. 
I'd love to see. Is you. there somewhere? It's going to be really fun because I haven't performed somewhere with Coke we can in a long find time. your performance schedule on the yeah, web. Yeah, johnhodgman.com. It's all there. Yeah, there's a there's if you go on the actual under upcoming physical manifestations. Upcoming physical manifestations, exactly. Yeah, okay. there it is. That, yeah, that's looking about right. There you go. There, November that's it. second uh, and November third. It's it's right there. All there. And you're in, in the Bay Area to do, you said, some shows? No, I'm in the Bay Area to do this, Leo. <laughs> you, really? Just this? Yeah. You came all the way out here just to do this? Surely there must be another. Nope. Like, nope. There's, that's it. Huh? There isn't any other reason. <laughs> I uh, I should offer you a glass of water or something before I well, set you back on would, the road. would be appropriate. That would have been appropriate at the beginning of this. Would you like a glass of water, a glass of anything? I hear you gave away all the Jägermeister that we drink at... Uh... Oh, no, we we actually have all the Jägermeister. Do you have... Do you have let me ask you this question. We, we have every drop of that still. Do you, do you, have, any, do you have any Malort? No, what is the, Malort? The Chicago, Swedish... The Chicago-based sort of Swedish liqueur that tastes like wormwood and pencil shavings? Never had that. Oh, good, thank heavens. <laughs> do you have... Um... <laughs> Do you happen to have any alcoholic whipped cream? We do, as a matter of fact. Would you like some? Yeah, that would be great. Thank okay, you. Okay, we'll get you. We'll, run, just, and, we'll just, run and get you some alcohol. It's a little parched. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't had any dairy intoxicants today. Uh, do you really wear a robe during so the sentencing? The water, and then use the yogurt. No, I didn't. No, no, thank you. <laughs> There's the alcoholic whipped cream, however. Thank you very I'll much. I'll shake it. You know what's an interesting fact about this? No. It says it right on here do not refrigerate. Yeah. No, it's look at this. This this will this will last you through Ragnarok and the end of the world, of course. We just shoot it in our mouths, but if you'd like to No, no, I this can... is what we call a Petaluma coffee. <laughs> it's, you know what? Maybe you should have refrigerated it because this is I feel like this is would not you, you how like, it should be. Would you, like some, would you like some mayonnaise? I have some here. This might this might help. I feel like this should <laughs> Now you're gonna have to put some shoes on. There you go. All right. Yeah. See if the dog will eat it. No, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. You know, it was this was really good when we first got it. <laughs> you think that it should be a little bit more it frothy? Seem, it doesn't seem so creamy as no. it used to be. I mean, just me. Mm. You know, now that I see you do that, and now that I picture how many times that's happened. <laughs> I'm really sorry that like I. A fresh I'm really sorry I put this in my. <laughs> it's not even coffee; it's water. That's what makes it the Petaluma special. <laughs> this is really oh, wow! It's such a thrill to have you here. I got to say, mm. um, I'm not very reading. honored. Do you? Yeah, you do. Uh, when you do these events, do you do readings? Do you do? Uh, do you do uh, jokes? I don't do readings anymore. Magic I stage don't, magic. I don't do readings anymore. I mean, why not? I, well, I mean, I, that is to say, I don't. I because I've gotten smarter. Uh, and I've lost the ability to read. But I no longer hold the book. Is, are you saying reading is a vestigial uh, ability? It, it is. I've, 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 I've moved You've beyond transcended. it. Now that the singularity is occurring, I've replaced my brain with a thumb drive. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. That must Take be. a lot of vitamins, download your brain to a thumb drive. Boom. Done. Job singularity, done. Singularity kit. You can go home. Um, I, I think that this alcoholic whipped cream has stained my jeans. <laughs> We'll get you some. Can we have some new jeans from Mr. Hutchman? I don't do readings. Any, I used to do read. I would read from the book. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But now, but now that's I, kind uh, of what authors will do. They, now, you could but read now from I do something book, that is but... much more of a, a, an, an imitation of stand-up comedy. I am definitely standing up. Had you done? And I'm presenting this book? material from the book and also material that isn't from the book. But, but you're I, telling jokes. I'm telling jokes. I'm telling and you, jokes. And you've never done that before. Not not without a net, as it were. Not without the book. It had right. always been that that I would tell stories and. Right. And occasionally digress. Do you know what I mean? But I always had that there, and right. I no longer do it. So it's a new experience for me. And I think, I think performing in that way and doing Judge John Hodgman is is presuming that the world does not end in Ragnarok on December twenty first. I think that is going to be the future for me. You know, I love performing, and I love talking to people. You're very good at around it. the country and telling them what to do and how to think. <laughs> Judge John Hodgman is entirely ad libbed. It's not scripted or in yeah, any that's, way. Yeah, that's prepared. correct. I usually don't realize I'm doing it until halfway through. <laughs> you go, oh my God, I'm doing another podcast. I swore I would never do this must, again. I, sometimes I feel it must be how you feel. <laughs> yes, exactly. You are the. You are the. <laughs> how did I get here? For the elderly people in the crowd, you are the Truman Show. You are the. Per, you are. 
This is the panopticon of your life. You are aging in real time on the internet. We did not. There's turn not the a moment that you are not that you are not scrutinized. I, I did note it that you posted on johnhodgman.com some uh, image, some older images of me. I don't know. Did you distort that somehow? I that is not how it. my head looks. <laughs> you know, no one no one likes to see themselves. No one likes to see themselves on television. You look like an alien. And people especially don't like to see themselves on television a thousand years ago. <laughs> But no, that's a. Is I, that some sort of strange Instagram that's a filter? Photo from, I haven't that's a photo. Seen? That's a photo from, from your office here, from the brick house, <laughs> out, out sort of. It was, it's very strange. There's a, just a blank wall, yeah, with a picture and in the it. middle of it, like with a thumbtack, there's this one little picture of you from the screensavers, <laughs> and it brought back, you know, to me that's like the equivalent of like an old timey Western photo you get taken on the boardwalk. <laughs> And but then, it's real. And then there was a picture. There's a big. There's a banner out there from Tech TV. You also took a picture of that. And uh, I know from American Pickers that, that kind of old fashioned advertising gets oh, a lot of money at auction. That's big bucks. We so got I'm there. Gonna be, I'm going to be stealing it. Hanging on the wall. That and the uh, alcoholic whipped cream is going to just be the. That's my. Uh, I'm saving. Oh, so I'm, we're just getting a note here. Oh, here's the fo- here's the actual photo. Now, see, that doesn't. I don't. I don't think that looks quite so distorted. <laughs> Would you like me to sign that for you? <laughs> Where, oh, there we are. Yeah, do you have that Sharpie I threw at you before? I do. I want to grab that for you, John. <laughs> Since you never did Don't get to, to the, the screensaver set. Hey, everybody, it's me, John Hodgman. If you've seen this man, then you probably have used a computer once. Because he's always on. This is what he looked like uh in the in the 1950s when he did his show about ENIAC on public television and now look at him oh my the same he doesn't age i have not aged in fact i think my hair is less white that'd be terrific if you'd sign that for me that'd be yeah. a good trade a fair trade for the mayonnaise that i gave you from your own refrigerator it would, in- it would indeed and i'm going to get you to sign this book and i'm going to get you to sign my audio book as well because it's a digital download only oh that's really quite a disappointment. You know, so I just have to, the only thing I can do is sign your chest. Okay. All right. We will do that. What, is there anything that we can say to the chat room? Is this something that we need to do? Hey, somebody's heard the WFMU phone-in show. Oh, yeah. The, the, the best show on WFMU. Yeah. Is pretty good. Says, am I allowed to say their names? Yeah. Web7723. <laughs> I'm glad you did. Chomp Mike, what kind of food does a Hodgman eat? Uh, you know, I eat regular high-protein nutritional paste just like every other deranged millionaire. <laughs> Uh, John, is it Swami, says John, is it as much fun as it seems to do your segments on The Daily Show as it seems? Yeah, I like it because I have a teleprompter, so I never replace, I never uh, repeat saying as it seems over and over again. Uh, ENIAC Fanboy, what is John Hodgman's favorite band he could recommend? Quack, what is on John Hodgman's favorite band he would recommend for the chat room? He's he's from Europe. Um, I'm going to give you just a a few right now. Here, where are we? There, listen to me, internet. Uh, the Long Winters, uh, Mountain Goats, uh, Tune Yards, uh, and Megaphone. Those are the four that I'm listening to a lot right now. Uh, okay, Scarlett Johansson, can you set me up? I don't even know what that's all about. It's just internet <laughs> It's going static. very fast now. Yeah, just Scarlett Johansson is thrown in. <laughs> Web3740, sorry to interrupt. Can anyone recommend a free file extractor? <laughs> <laughs> Ran into a large file, unable to open in outdated XP. Uh, you yes. have a suggestion, okay? Uh, yes, it's called uh, it's called uh, mustache, and uh, it's available uh, from my website, johnhodgman.com. Uh, it will destroy your computer. But, uh, do you recommend we wear two pairs of glasses too? Says super somebody or other. Yeah, well, if you, if you have a pair of shooting glasses that are not prescription, you have to wear two. You have to. What, what is a shooting? What are shooting glasses? They're for sh- for shooting. These were a gift from John Roderick, the Long Winters. He, cut, he has a lot of glasses. For shooting there. guns? For shooting for shooting guns, yeah. You know, skeet shooting and... Special glasses to protect your eyes? Zombie shooting, that sort of thing. Okay. It's just, you know, it's like uh, uh, fog fog cutter glasses. You can see better. You see the birds or whatever yeah, you're shooting at. Your prescription. The zombies. Uh, jo- no. You've been invited no. to Cleveland? Uh, I would love to go to Cleveland, absolutely. Okay. What, what I, I was just in Columbus, Ohio, and uh, that old rivalry... The mistake on the lake, they call it. John, did you contribute to the writing of any of the Apple ads? We answered that one already. Why don't you pay attention? <laughs> uh, B Bo Boo, are you ready for the zombies? There aren't going to be zombies. That's not going to happen. I'm just, I told you, Blood Wave, Omega Pulse, um, uh, 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 robots coming to life. 
Um, the, the giant big, uh, thing in the center of the Earth. What's the, that? The sentry toad in the center of the sentry Earth is going to crack, yeah. to- crack the Earth in half. Yeah. Um, the big dog, the, you know, the big dog robots from I Boston think that's Dynamics. been discredited. You don't think that's real? I think that's not real. Well, uh, it's going to come to life. The, no. They're all going to come to life. I think I heard on the news that that was not going to happen. Um, dog storm. But all the dogs in the world, including this one, Ozzy. are all going to form one super pack the size of Rhode Island and just take... And feces all of America. So those are the things you have to worry about. The only thing that the only no, people aren't going to come back to life is zombies. The only thing that's going to come back to life are taxidermied animals, and they're not going to get very far because they're nailed down. <laughs> they're glued. Um, but what's nice about this book is you actually have a calendar of things as they happen, so you can be prepared. For instance, today, deep beneath Denver International Airport, scientists succeed in using the even larger hadron collider. So that's the good one. To create a portal to another dimension, but what they do not know is what they will find on the other side. Yeah. That's, uh, that is part of the Today in Ragnarok page-a-day calendar Yeah, that runs atop the cross of every page right. and is also included in the audiobook in its own way. And that is a day-by-day predictor of the last year of, of, of human civilization. And then you do something I think is quite clever because you say the end, but then there's many, many more pages following yeah the end is the section about about the end of the world oh and that then, confused me i thought the book was over and then the beginning is a flashback to when i stopped being a liter oh. a professional literary agent and started being a writer which is more or less a true story except for the parts that i made up huh. yeah has this been a good oh yeah i see the beginning is at the beginning and the end is at the end and then goodbye is the last chapter. goodbye is the last chapter yeah yeah for obvious reasons goodbye <sighs> Will there be a fourth book if the world does not end? What? <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to challenge you. I just I wrote a thousand pages. <laughs> I'm not. I can't stop yet. When do There's I get to more. stop? Look, I know that you do. <laughs> fi- I know that 500 podcasts a day isn't enough for you. It's not enough because you're a voracious beast. I am. But I'm an animal. Us, some of us, a thousand pages is plenty. I like the table of uh, experts consulted. In. Oh, you're not, I think I should put you in there. I'm a little, well, I wasn't going to say. You and Cammie from the lamented, late lamented Munchcast. You were a Munchcast fan. I oh. know that. In fact, we believe it or not, we kept that show alive an extra year because you were a fan. Oh, no, I know. You were the only person listening to it. it and was, we actually made that show for you, Are the archives you, are still Hodgman. up, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, and we oh. made it for you. I think we even mentioned that at some point. Oh, yeah. There's only one person listening is John Hodgman. <laughs> but because of John, we kept the show going. The first, the first time you mentioned my name on any of your fake radio air... It was that. I think it was on there, it and I was that. listening to it. I almost, <laughs> and I fell off the treadmill. I was back during a brief non-sedentary if, period of my life. In fact, John's uh, amazing physical uh, prowess and shape is due to Munchcast. It's true. <laughs> exactly thanks, so. Thanks to Munchcast. Oh, Leo Laporte, I'm such a fan. So they miss you on uh, Board to Death. Was yeah. that character yeah, based? Well why, well, why get a time machine and go back and watch it? <laughs> Maybe we'd still be on the air. There you go. I couldn't be sadder about about that not not existing anymore. I mean, again, again, another beautiful thing that I was essentially a tourist in, insofar as I had a little role, but allowed me to go there and it's work. Great, isn't it? It's wonderful. Yeah. And the and the guy, and you know Jason and um, Zach and Ted Dance and so amazing, so talented, and, yeah. and Jonathan Ames, the real Jonathan Ames, who made it. And it was all made just a few blocks from my house. And uh, They made it in Brooklyn? That wasn't oh, Hollywood? Yeah. No, 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 no. All, all of it was shot in New York. Oh, that's and unusual. Lots of, and lots of, lots of it in Brooklyn. Very oh, little great. of it in Manhattan. Oh, that's great. And uh, somebody's saying you have seven toes, so I guess <laughs> we now want to end the show because that was something that we didn't really want to talk about. No, it's fine. It's, uh, um, uh, Will yeah. you comment on the presidential debate? Will you do a... Uh, you know, any kind of... Any Depends kind of... on when you allow me to leave. We can, we're going to let you go right now. Oh, yeah. Well, then maybe I'll get back to... Uh, Wait a minute. I haven't totally. shown him. i got to show him my bespoke box. Here we go. Would you get, would you get my bespoke box? I think I left it in my office. Uh, Info Mistress asks, Hey, Yaley's with and poof source Spizwink, so it's not mutually exclusive. exclusive. You could listen to both. But I Jonathan a, Colton was a Spizwink was and, he a Spizwink? And, a, and a whiff and poof. No, I didn't know he was a whiff and poof. Oh, yeah. You didn't know that? I you had, had him on no for an idea. hour? I didn't even ask him. See, this is why he's a little lost lamb who's gone astray. Were you a, were you a member of one of these singing groups? No, he's I don't. You have to sing. understand everybody on the inter- uh, normal people on the internet. Uh, Leo and I went to uh, at different times. Obviously, um, uh, obviously, we went to we went to Yale University, which is an accredited four year college in Southern Connecticut. <laughs> yes. And Jonathan Colton there also went there too. J- Jonathan and I went at the same time, 
And at Yale, uh, instead of having fraternities and sports teams and other sort of normal social clubs, uh, it's all a cappella singing groups. So there are far more a cappella singing groups in New Haven, Connecticut than any population could possibly want or endure. <laughs> and so there are about 7,000 a cappella singing groups. And the quite top, a bit. The top, top a cappella singing group of them all is the Whiff and Poofs and Cole right. Porter. Uh, for those of you who are sad and asthmatic at home, you know Cole Porter. <laughs> uh, uh, Cole Porter was a Whiff and Poof. Huh? So they're, they're Did he that. write the Whiff and Poof song? I wonder who wrote uh, that. You know, I, th- I used to believe that to be sure, a sure thing for true. Well, then I feel like I may have learned that it wasn't for true. I think that he did. That must be confusing for The you. internet will know. The internet will oh, know. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I thought the internet would look up Cole Porter and Whiff and Poofs, but instead the internet just came up with, <laughs> did he say Whiff and Poop? <laughs> Thanks, and, the, Thanks, the, internet. Thanks for fulfilling my expectations. It's somewhat more. inconsistent. I have a gift for you. <clears throat> this, is oh. a, this is a sponsor of the show. Oh, my goodness. Thank it's you. It's called Bespoke Post. What a delight. And what they do is they do little gift packages. Oh, and uh, if you go to bespokepost.com slash twit, don't, don't, I did not save Close 20% marketing. on your first box. This okay. was, but uh, you can have this. You can actually sign up for 270 bucks. I think, for six months. It's $45 a box. Right. You can return it if you don't like it. Um, you can't return this. No, no. Because I've used it. But if, if I had not used it, you could return it. Oh. It comes in a fine, in this case, Macanudo cigar box, but it's not cigars. It is a uh, Badger shaving brush and a stand. Yeah. Uh, the shaving oil. Yeah. Now, I don't know if you shave anymore, but... I, d- I, I do. I thought this would be appropriate. I, sha- I shave the non... The non-hair uh, stuff? The non-Pringles can mascot yeah. parts of my face. Shave cream. Anyway, this is, this is your little bespoke gift. Thank you. And I wanted to give this to you, and I want to invite everybody who's watching the show, if you want to find out more, to go to bespokepost.com. Look at this. Look at all Isn't these... Great? These creams and, and ointments and unguents. It's so lovely. Uh, you know, it's nice that I, I come here, uh, I take a plane all the way here... Just for one reason, to be on this show. And you repay me by making me check my bag on the way home. <laughs> Thank you very much. No, well, it looks lovely. Can we it get a Ziploc uh, bag for Mr. Hodgman? And we'll, we'll put it in the Ziploc and then it'll yeah. be... It's all under three ounces. I don't, I don't want to know what you use Ziploc bags for here, <laughs> given that you're California drinking alcoholic uh, <laughs> shaving cream from the nozzle. <laughs> Uh, they did madness. have, and I wish fly I, in Hollywood. Everybody. I wish I know because I do think they have a special box uh, for feet. No, okay, I'll put my shoes back. But on. But I didn't. Uh, <laughs> I don't think that I. This is uh, fantastic. Isn't that great? Oh, lovely. Little, they're actually from New York City. They do oh. a little curation here. We'll oh. give you a little. Uh, this is a little Ziploc bag you can use to put the uh, put the oh, stuff it's in. Got a little, a little cockroach. It comes on with it. a cockroach, yeah, which is okay. nice. Nice. That way, to the TSA people won't be tempted to steal Look, your shaving. Oh, gear. do you know what happened today? I left my wristwatch in the security this morning. No. Yeah, so if any of you... This is a message for people of the internet. If any of you were at uh, gate A2, the security line right by gate A2 at JFK for Virgin American this morning, a beautiful watch that my wife gave me. I'm sh- And I I'm left it behind, and I feel really bad about it. Did it have an engraving of any kind on it? Or? Yeah, Paul Smith, my other name. <laughs> <laughs> my beloved Paul Smith. My belo- dear beloved my Paul My beloved Smith. husband, Paul Smith. Oh. If you find it out there, everybody, don't be a jerk. Debbie. Give it back to me. Groovy <laughs> Brian says the TSA probably stole it. It's insights like that that make Brian so groovy. <laughs> you're right, Brian. Of course. Of course you're right. <laughs> Gabzilla says you're married rats. Oh, Gabzilla. Hello. Ah, you don't want to know about Gabzilla. Thank you all for being here, for joining us for this very special occasion on Triangulation. I'm not leaving. John's going to stick around. We have another. What's the next show? Is it Ham Nation? Are you a ham? What? Ham? I eat ham all the time. I thought you stopped Munchkin. <laughs> no. We, uh, is Ham Nation? What's oh, that? is this your ham radio? Is this your ham radio podcast? Yeah. Yeah. Breaker, breaker. <laughs> no. You must not say that. They'd take that, uh, take a umbrage. Oh, really? Do you oh, ever yeah. pick up the ghost of Marlon Brando? <laughs> yeah. He was a ham, he was a ham was radio he a ham? enthusiast. Of course. Oh, yeah. He'd I had stay no up idea. All night. He'd stay up all night talking from Tahiti. No kidding. Talking about the plight of the Native the American horror, and giving out muffin recipes. <laughs> Still, I had no idea. If yeah, I had only known, I probably true. would have spent some more time on the airwaves. You don't really have a ham radio po- a netcast, do you? What's the next show on the air? Ham, 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 ham Nation. Ham Nation. Six o'clock. Six a.m. PM. If you stick how, around, you could go to. The, you how could can watch, I not? You could watch the debates, or you can be on the ham show. That's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? What? How many? How many netcasts do you need? <laughs> I want more. Do you have one about Morse code?
that's Ham Nation. That's one of the things. Oh, that's one of the things you sure. cover, right? It goes together. Do you yeah. have a netcast just about pneumatic tubes? No, but that's a great idea. Boy, we've this... been looking for something to do in the back room here. We could put a whole yeah. network of tubing. Absolutely. Do you have? You should have every today in penny farthing bicycles. <laughs> every every deranged millionaire. I always wanted. The, you know, like they have them in, in the old department stores where you, you put a message yeah. and then you go, and it just goes, and it goes to some other place. Yeah. No, I always wanted one of those. You should, you we should build a whole thing tubing. here. We could put pneumatic tubing it's not, in. It's not too late. Do they still? I'm sure that there's some hipster bespoke pneumatic tubing outfit <laughs> in San is. Francisco. Come on. I, I you know there's a secret speakeasy somewhere in San Francisco where you place your order in, in you know. In, in hobo code and throw it into a pneumatic tube and it shoots off to a, a brass a brass uh, a brass lined bar where a dude in a in a in a, in a leather pith helmet gets Ke- it. Kelly Tube Systems, a century of integrating service with technology. They make uh, apparently they make tubes. What is this you're going to show? I don't know. Only uh, I don't. Apparently they're putting in a tubing system, a pneumatic tubing system with vegetables. N- Wait a minute. <laughs> not, Are they going to send those vegetables through a pneumatic tube? <laughs> and when they come out the other side, are they going to be dehydrated? on the internet. Wow. I think you have a new sponsor. And a I new netcast. I want that. This Week in Tubes with John Hodgman. <laughs> John, a pleasure. Real thrill. Thank you. Uh, for, I'm sure there's mine. some other reason you're out here. But there is. For, I'm going to tell you one more time. You have to believe me. There <laughs> isn't. I came out exactly for this reason. I, I am honored and nice to see you. Thrilled. What a Thank pleasure. You. I'll what come back thrill. anytime. Thank you. Enjoy your, leaving. enjoy your bespoke <clears throat> shaving kit. And stay as long as you want. Good night. We've stolen your shoes. Triangulation uh, appears on the Twit Network on Wednesdays at uh, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 2200 UTC. Don't drink that. Please, I beg of you. Oh. God, I... <coughs> oh, oh. <laughs> We're going to be known ah. as the show that killed John Hodgman. <laughs> That's so sad. I don't want to go down in uh, history uh, that way. What's that? The show that the person that killed John Hodgman. I just had a lot of, <laughs> a lot of whipped cream. So I... That's amazing. Is that my card? Oh boy! Is that your card? John Hodgman, ladies and gentlemen, uh, and uh, trying to everybody. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. You know, we when is this? When does your ham cast start? Six o'clock. We did this whole show, and I'm so upset. The lower third, there's no space between October and 2012. And we did the whole show get that way. Act, I don't think that would have... act together. That would not have happened on The Daily Show. Here get comes your the tubes, by the way. Together. They're bringing the tubing in. Yeah, we're getting ready for so, the uh, show. So. Oh, this week in tubes. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Fantastic. <laughs> what is that? Showing me blue meth? Is that what it is? Yeah, you... We'd like to also give you... Well, I'm a big Breaking Bad fan, so yeah. this means a lot to me. Yeah. Um, this is very rare. There's only a small amount of that left in the U.S., and that also you can have. What is this? But I would suggest not going, uh, trying to go through the airport security with that. Oh, really? You need to use that now. Let's, let's put it that way. Oh, he just ate it. <laughs> <laughs> It was supposed <laughs> I feel so horrible about that. That's terrible. Who knew he was a, he had a, he had some sort of sensitivity apparently. Oh, everyone can see my belly. <laughs> okay, would you save that for our reel? <laughs> the day John Hodgman died <laughs> or at least had a minor stroke. <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> I was just enjoying some bath salts and butt checking, and all of a sudden this happened. <laughs> Does this ever end? Can I leave? <laughs> you must. <laughs> <laughs>